welcome back to the Cannes Film Festival. He's mostly known for his crime and action films and his movies exploring the themes of fate and friendship. Now Hong Kong director Johnny To will be remembered for a slightly different reason, transforming the French legend Johnny Halliday into a hitman. In Vengeance, Halliday goes on the rampage trying to avenge the death of his daughter's family. Let's have a look now at the Johnny duo's attempt for the palm door. Don't worry, we'll find them. One, two, three. Johnny Toe's latest flick follows some basic rules for success. Gangsters that shoot each other, a twisted plot full of intrigue. It's one hour and 48 minutes of pure action. Toe's pulled together a surprising cast. There's some of his favorite actors from the Hong Kong movie scene who play opposite French rocker Johnny Holiday. <laughs> I didn't have much dialogue, so that was okay. And holding a gun, well, I already knew how to do that. Cool-headed and packing iron, Johnny Holiday decimates Hong Kong's triads, slipping seamlessly into Johnny Toe's model. Johnny Toe is a maniac for detail. He does things to the millimeter, his camera, his framing. That's really important to him. So during a scene, I really had to follow the instructions and be in the right place at the right time. And when bullets aren't flying, vengeance injects a dose of humor, one of Toe's trademarks. A chef. Chef. Chef my ass. I don't like it when my characters are too unidimensional. In a gangster film, they're going to endure violent situations, but I also like to see them in lighter situations when they're not so serious. But in Vengeance, acting takes a back seat. What's appealing is Johnny Toe's style, halfway between a John Woo action movie and one of Sergio Leone's westerns. Toe is in such high demand that he mass produces his films and in record time. Sometimes on set, actors bear the brunt of such speed. In Johnny Toe's film, accident always happens. So if you're not a tough guy, don't go into that. Lamp, lamp shit hits uh, his gun, hit my face, chit bonk here, and I, um, and the next day, my gun take off his tooth. Extreme filming conditions, actors kept on their toes, Perhaps that's the key to Hong Kong filmmaking. The end result is a high-strung film that will make your heart skip a beat, but that's not likely to take home the Palme d'Or. When the Cannes organizers selected the Iranian film No One Knows About Persian Cats to screen here at the festival, they couldn't have known how timely their decision would be. It's a film about the underground music scene in Tehran. It's co-written by Roxana Sabri, the US journalist released last week after being imprisoned in Iran for allegedly being a spy to the US. It's brought politics to the red carpet. Let's have a look at an extract from the film. Well, I'm pleased to say Roxana's partner, the award-winning director, Barman Gabardi, joins me now. He co-wrote and directed the film. Now, Barman, this must be a very bittersweet time for you. It was supposed to be a celebration, but I don't... There's lots of things going on for you at the moment. Yeah, you're, you're, you're right. I'm, I'm, I'm not really happy I'm here. And before... We, I, 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 wanna, I went to here uh, f just five hours before we, we had a ticket, we, I, I with Ro I, me with Roxana, but uh, she, didn't, she, she, she couldn't come to the film festival and she, could, she told me, Bam, I have to stay with my parents and she, she, she will be right. And then I came alone, I didn't want to come, just, uh, she told me, just go and help the people in your film and just talking about them. They need you and you have to, you, you, must, be, you must be in there. And then I came here now really 95 or 99 person. A lot of time I, I really I'm so sad it's about my life, about uh, everything. And then just some people like you or, and other people show me the, the reaction. I get into a little bit happy and just like that. 
Why did, why did you want to make this film? It was a dangerous project. What made you really, want to take that dangerous. risk? It's not dangerous. This film, is, for me, is like a picnic, you know? But I, I, I was not worried about myself. I, I was worried about, about the people in my film. They are so young, and they were so afraid about the, uh, some government. Maybe, maybe if they play in the film, and after the film, uh, they send them to prison like that. And I told them, I promise you, Never someone cannot send you to prison. I promise you, I'm here. Why did you make this film? What was the aim of it? You know, I, I love music. Uh, if, I, if, I, if, if I'm not the filmmaker, I, I, I choose this music. I, uh, we're going to underground the, the, the studio for record my sound and record my music. And that, that's the, in this location. I, I made some people in my film, and then when I watch them, when I see them, they, 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 I told myself how they can play the music without the promotion, without the money, without the technical. Okay, why you try to find a budget for find the promotion, for find the technical, forget it. Just you can buy a small camera, like my camera, script, we wrote, we, we wrote in the location with the Roxana and Mr. Hossein Abkenar, he's my friend. And just with the feeling, with the good feeling, we made it. And then when I saw them, I told myself how, how the government cannot help them, how we can make a new country. The artists and composers, especially these people, can make new country, you know? So do you think films like yours can make a difference in your country? But really, I don't know. I, you know, you know that. My, my last film and this film never d d cannot... Sh the government don't show my film in, in the cinema in Iran. Like, and my last film, I go to band, is forbidden. But with the DVD and Blackway, they can see that. But some people know that, Bahman without the promotion making film. How we can, we can make this film. A lot of young people now talking about the underground film. I'm happy about this, you know. Th this time, with the promotion and the, with the censorship, the government cannot stop the artists like me or like another people. But now you can't go back to your country. No, it's, it's not about afraid. I, I have a plan here. I want to find second home in Europe or West or I don't know, East, Middle East, like that. I have to find. The time is very short. I'm 39 or 40 years old. You know, the time is like that. It's just fast. Okay, Barman, thanks very much You're for joining welcome. us. You're Thank welcome. You. Well, when the sun goes down on the Cannes Film Festival, the glamour levels go up. Let's have a look at Cannes by Night. Tonight, we're taking you to a party organized to honor the great Pedro Almodovar. Amongst the guests, the gorgeous couple from Luc Besson's Big Blue. Rosanna Arquette and Jean-Marc Barr, they're both used to the croisette, and here's a scoop. What's your best memory? Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got it, didn't you? <laughs> Minutes later, Rosie de Palma, Pedro's muse, walks in. She's the master of ceremonies. Tonight, we're going to honor Cannes nightlife, with your help, I hope, because it can't just all be work and no play. Sometimes you've got to put the cameras and the microphones down and enjoy yourselves. And that's just what we did. The atmosphere was strange and amazing, driven by Rosie's favorite artists. Belgian group Das Pop was incredible. Just what you need to dance the night away. Well, thanks for joining me here at the Trois Quatorze Hotel on the French Riviera. Join me again tomorrow.